I've been slowly giving in some tools, some explorations that help us to question reality as we see it. The reason I'm doing this is I'm kind of following my own journey as it started about 20 years ago. Um, longer than that, I guess. <laughs> I forgot how old I was. <laughs> so about 30 years ago of really getting serious about um, a spiritual path of some sort. And one of the most powerful things for me was questioning this reality that seemed so solid around me. One of the most mind-blowing things for me was learning about our electromagnetic spectrum. And I think it'll blow your mind too. My name is Kenton Whitman, and I believe in you. You've probably heard of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is a, a word, or a, this is a term that we use to describe a, a spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. <laughs> and this is, you could think of it as it's, it's all the same stuff, but its wavelength and its frequency changes along that spectrum but it's all the same stuff. We might call it light. It moves at the speed of light. It is um, what we, when I look out the, at the world and I'm seeing things, all these, these colors that I see around me, that is part of that electromagnetic spectrum. It's a, it's a little part of it that my eyes are capable of seeing. This spectrum goes from little teeny teeny waves, little gamma waves that are so tiny that they're, you could almost think they're down there with atoms, all the way up to what, what we call, uh, at kind of the top of the range would be um, elf wave. There's a way back through the woods off this way, about 50 miles, there's a giant elf antenna that used to be used, I think, to communicate with um, submarines during the Cold War. And it's defunct now, it doesn't work anymore, but it was throwing out these gigantic waves that, that have a wavelength that is, that is immense. And when I say immense, if I, would, if I would travel once around the world, twice around the world, three times around the world, stretch that line out, that would be the wavelength of one of those waves. So you can see that there's an extreme variation in wavelength and frequency on this spectrum. Why does this matter? Well, here's why it matters. Because these, these frequencies, these are all... You could think of them again as, as kinds of light. They reveal and interact with the world in different ways. So, what I mean by that is if I hold up a, don't have one, but if I hold up a red sheet of paper, the sunlight coming down all that light is absorbed except for the red wavelengths which bounce off. Those come to my eyes. So that, that color that we call red has the power to absorb orange and green and yellow and violet and blue and all those wavelengths. But the red ones bounce off. Those come into my eyes and then I perceive red. Green piece of paper, likewise. It's going to absorb everything, but bounce back those little, uh, that section of the electromagnetic frequency that is, is a very certain wavelength that we call green. <laughs> You've heard of x-rays before. Those can penetrate 
through my skin, through my flesh. But when they hit something as solid, as dense as bone, they bounce back and they're reflected. And our eyes, of course, cannot see that. But we have machines that can pick it up and then I can see my bones by taking that picture. Maybe you see where this is going. There is this huge range of, I'm just going to call them colors to simplify things. This huge range of colors in the world. Some of those colors can see, can move right through things that we call solid, like my flesh. Now, we know that these colors can be seen sometimes by other creatures. We have machines that can, for instance, see infrared wavelengths. That's what we call heat. We can feel it, but we can't see it. But we've developed machines that can look over at a person and then see the heat rising off of them. I'd scan through the woods and there's a campfire over there. It's going to be glowing, not just the fire itself, that our eyes are capable of seeing, but a big glow around it, kind of an aura around it of, of light. That, <laughs> that machine is really just picking up the infrared and then translating it into light that I can see, into orange and red colors that I can see through that machine. Chickadees, that's a species of bird we have around here. The males and the females look exactly alike, but they actually have markings on them that make them look different. Our eyes can't see, but if we could see into ultraviolet, just a little bit further into the spectrum, we would see that they have, the males and females have different markings and that they then can recognize each other as male and female very easily because their eyes are capable of picking that up. There are flowers that have patterns on them that we can't see, even the common dandelion has a, a pattern, a ring in there, that we cannot see because we can't see ultraviolet. But insects that are capable of seeing the ultraviolet, they can see that. And sometimes on these flowers, those patterns guide the insect right into the little landing pad where it's going to get the nectar and then it's going to get pollen on it to help pollinate the plant. The world is way more colorful than just the small amount of the spectrum we can see. And when I learned how small, how tiny a portion of the spectrum we could see, that's what blew my mind. Because what that told me is how much of the world is invisible to my eyes. Remember I said three times around the earth? Let's pretend it's actually not that big. It's just once around the earth. And imagine that you're going to start walking right now. And you're going to start walking around the entire planet. As you walk, you're going to encounter people. People with stories. People with ideas. You're going to encounter roads. You're going to encounter wilderness. You're going to encounter mountains, deserts. You're going to encounter cultures. You're going to encounter whales. Amazing things. And that journey all the way around the planet is going to be incredible. There's so much to see. Now, if that journey around the planet was the electromagnetic spectrum, and I took a single hair of mine, and I laid it down in front of me on the ground, that width of that hair is actually more of the spectrum than I can see. That is more of the world that is available to me. But let's just imagine that that hair is it. That little hair, that's how much of the world I get to travel with these eyes. That's it. Lay that hair across the pinky finger of a human. Could we extrapolate from seeing just that little teeny picture of the world? That's all we'd ever see, ever. Could we extrapolate that there's a human being with ideas and thoughts? Could we extrapolate that down the way there's the person's car that they drive and the horses that they keep and ride? 
could we extrapolate that there's a big wilderness right down the way from them? Whoa, all we see is this tiny little single hair. And that's how much of the journey around the earth that our eyes are capable of seeing. Our machines can see more, right? We can look up and we can see into infrared, infrared. we can see into ultraviolet, we can see with x-rays. But it's so important to note that when we look out and we see the world through that, take the example of x-rays, the x-ray machine is not showing what the color of x-rays looks like. It's just seeing a translation into the colors I can see. Because right now, unless we can somehow affect our, our brains in the future, the only thing we're ever going to see are is Roy G. Biv, right? Red, orange, those, those seven colors that we're capable of seeing. That's it. As I said, this kind of blew my mind because suddenly I had to question, what does a tree look like? I'm seeing one little hair of the entire world of what that tree is. This world I'm seeing around me, I am basically blind. And we also know that my sense of smell, compared to all we have to do is look at any dog walking around who is enjoying this entire world of scent around it, that I'm seeing only a tiny little fraction, or smelling only a tiny little fraction of what the smells are in the world. I can taste only a fraction of tastes that are available. My hearing is confined to a narrow range. I'm walking through this world that looks normal to me and I feel like, yeah, this is the world. I have a very uh, biased kind of sensory-centric, human sensory-centric viewpoint of the world and I think this is the world. But I am seeing so little of the world sensing so little of the world that I am effectively walking around blind and deaf and unable to smell or taste or touch. What is this world really like? Questioning this, it actually can start to bring us together. Because now, when, when I meet somebody and I disagree with them and they're trying to explain an idea, well, if I can't even be on the same wavelength with them, with somebody that I'm literally on the same wavelength with, the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum, then, you see, it brings us together because it says, you know, we're all kind of in the dark here together. And the world we're seeing we're only seeing a tiny fraction of it. If I'm only seeing a tiny fraction of the world, can I be really so sure that my ideas and my opinions are the real right ones and that yours are wrong? Or can I stop and realize that if we're all just seeing this tiny little bit of the world, then maybe it means that we're all ignorant. And if we're all ignorant, then maybe we'll start listening to each other more. We'll start hearing each other more. We'll be more compassionate and more open because we're not locked down into trying to defend our view of reality. For me, that was immense. When I learned that I am blind, I am deaf, I cannot taste, I cannot smell, I learned that I was ignorant. When I learned that I was ignorant, then I didn't have to defend my position so much. I didn't have to take myself so seriously. In doing so, I could start to hear others in a new way. And that was magical. Because in this little teeny bit of the world that I can see, there is so much there. But most of that, even most of the stuff that I was capable of seeing 
and sensing in the wavelengths that I'm physically capable of seeing, I was not seeing because my mind was closed to hearing others. Someone says they believe in ghosts. Ah. Someone says that, that capitalism is, is the only way to go. Blah. Somebody says this, or this. If I can stop and I can listen to their ideas, I can start to learn. doesn't mean I have to accept or agree with them, but I can hear. I can start opening up to this world. And even things that I don't agree with, I can hear those sides. I can be there with curiosity. I can realize that I'm ignorant. And then if I'm ignorant, I can always learn more. This catapulted me out into a desire to just continue to grow and grow and grow and always be a student. And I think that when we do that, the world just opens up. So this is my call for us today, is to realize that in understanding our own ignorance and everyone's ignorance, but especially our own, that's the most important person to realize, is immersed in ignorance, then something frees inside of us. If we can do this today and use that electromagnetic spectrum as a tool into it, then the world becomes so rich. And this world that we are capable of seeing, it is amazing, my friends. It's incredible. The good parts and the bad parts. The pain, the happiness, the joy, these all create this incredibly rich human experience. If we're closing ourselves off to that experience, we're missing a lot. In a way, this is a coming together in our ignorance, because then we can all just do the best we can, we can be, and we can be kind to each other as we move forward together. Thank you for watching. Share any of your thoughts in the comments below. Love to you all.